Hi everyone, I'm, uh, I'm excited to walk you through my framework for AI product management. Before we, we get into, into the main topic, I wanna give you guys a, a bit of an intro about myself. I started my career a little over 10 years ago in analytics, um, working first for a, a large financial institution in New York City. And then I, I worked for, uh, for a series of startups in the, in the small business space. Uh, also in New York City, uh, before finally uh, switching into product at, at Amazon a little over five years ago. Uh, and I, I had the opportunity to work across a, a number of product and a, a, across a, a number of, of geographic locations. I first started out working on uh, U.S. growth, uh, helping uh, rebuild Audible's part of Audible's acquisition business and also some uh, backend infrastructure work to, to help power the, the Audible acquisition business. Uh, from there, I switched into international expansion where I helped uh, launch Audible Canada and Audible for Business. And then finally, now I, I'm in Alexa Shopping where um, I look after the book conversational recommendation engine. So if you were to ask Alexa, recommend me a book or recommend me a book on Audible or recommend me a mystery book, uh, the conversation you have with Alexa is the experience that I that I look after. So... Here's my, I want to use this presentation to, to walk you through my framework for, for new product development. And uh, before we get into the technical components and into how we build a product, the actual building uh, and, and the AI part, I want to take a step back and, and walk you guys through uh, my, the important customer perspective uh, you should take and then also the, the business perspective. And what that will do is they will force you to think through ahead of time before you get into the building mode. Is this a meaningful product that solves a customer problem? And is this a, a meaningful uh, business opportunity for, for your company? Uh, and so what that will prevent is you going down a technical adventure that um, leads to a, a less than desirable outcome. Uh, the goal of, of this framework is to uh, help anticipate potential problems and to help course correct uh, your your product design to make sure that you are indeed focused on something that is meaningful to your customer and also to um, to your business. And so let's start out first with with the customer's perspective, um, because ultimately, while we are builders, we are first and foremost uh, problem solvers. And uh, whatever we build as as product manager should solve a, a customer problem. And so. As you as as you're going into your your product development uh, process, you should first start thinking about what problem are you solving for the customer. And at this point, you should you know hopefully the problem is, is meaningful and it's not just a, a nice to have because then you you should pivot right away. Uh, but you should force yourself to be specific. What exact problem are you are you solving for for the customer? Not in a not in a broad stroke of. Uh, for example, in, in book recommendations, I wouldn't say, what is wrong with, how can I improve the book experience for a customer? That's, that's really broad. Um, perhaps a better way to go about it would be to say, how can, I, how can Alexa be a value add to the book discovery journey for uh, a customer uh, within the, uh, the realm of possibilities that they have in terms of, of book discovery experiences? Uh, and so what's the value add for Alexa in terms of, of book discovery for the customer? And then uh, a good way to, to force yourself to think through, is this a meaningful problem for, for the customer? And are you, are you being precise enough with your, with your solution? Is if you were to anticipate the product being launched, what would a, an actual user say about the product? You know, if you were to imagine a quote. Uh, and here again, you have to force yourself to be very honest with yourself. Uh, Likely the product is not transforming their life in a way that is, um, you know, like, like, a, like a new drug or a new medication. Uh, likely you're, you're helping, improving the, you're helping improve the, the customer's life in, in some meaningful way, uh, but you should then be honest with yourself. What would the customer say? And would the customer be happy with this product? Would the customer say, yes, this really helps um, me with, my, uh, with freeing up my time, it helps me find cheaper alternative to, uh, to the products already existing in the marketplace. Like what is, what would the customer say that is a value add to them from this product? Uh, and so once you figure out your, the meaningful, 
uh, customer problem that you're solving and uh, how you're, you're um, and what the customer would, would think about it if they used it, you should really start thinking about the the end-to-end -end customer experience. How does a customer get into the product experience? How do they use the product experience? And then how do they gracefully exit? And so, for example, with book recommendations, what I think about uh, every day is how does the customer come into uh, this Alexa experience, right? Like what are the type of, um, of commands that, uh, that the customer says to Alexa to get into the experience? How do they discover the book that there are that Alexa is recommending to them, and is it a is it a useful recommendation? And then finally, um, how uh, how does the customer check out from from that experience um, to actually get the book? And so thinking through end to end through the customer experience really makes you think through what how what level of complexity does your product have, and what kind of, of building blocks will you then need uh, later on. Uh, one, and then two, as, as you do figure out what kind of building blocks you'll need to, to build this product, uh, forcing yourself to think through the end-to-end -end customer experience will provide the level of clarity that, that your engineering team and your data science team uh, needs in order to really help guide you and advise you as, as uh, critical business partners. Um, from there, you should think about what are the nuances of the customer experience? Should a customer get a different experience based on, on their characteristics? So for example, if it's if it's my first time using uh, the product, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, if it's my first time using the product, will I get a very different experience than if I'm a returning user? And then again, if I'm if I come back to the product every single day, will I get a very different experience than if I come back to the product once a month? Um, and lastly, especially in, in AI uh, powered products. Um, Privacy becomes a big concern. Uh, the bar you should hold for yourself is, is your product creepy or is your product delightful and, and helpful uh, to, uh, to the customer? And you know, every, every product is different, but ultimately uh, your job as a product manager is to intuitively try to figure out what is the, the right bar for delightful in your, in your particular area. And so once you've uh, you figured out the, the customer problem and you, you really understand the, the experience end to end, it's time to start thinking about, is this a product that, or a solution that is worth uh, taking on from a, from a business standpoint? Does this make sense for, for your organization? And so, um, you know, the first thing you should ask yourself is, uh, does, how does this align with my organizational goals? Uh, so for example, book recommendations, you can see, uh, perhaps if you're familiar with Amazon, Amazon has a long history in books. It has a long history in artificial intelligence and in smart home, um, and smart devices. And so it, this kind of an experience is a, is a nice uh, meeting of all of these different strengths that Amazon has. And so as, as you're thinking through your AI powered product, uh, does the solution you and the customer problem that you're, that you're proposing to tackle, does this align with uh, the critical areas for uh, for your business. And the reason that's important is you don't want to start aligning resources, figuring out all these designs. And then three months down the road, you never get the right level of funding or you get your product gets deprioritized because it's just not, it's not core to what your business is, uh, is tackling. Or even if it's core, it's not really an impactful, uh, an impactful product. And what also helps from that standpoint is helping uh, paint your vision for how the product will, will be useful to, uh, to the business and how uh, the business can leverage that product, not just in the next six to 12 months, but really in its, you know, the next three to five years and how that your product can become a, a building block for, for further expansion. And so how do you know you're on the right path to building that meaningful product? Um, what I found is that it's first helpful to figure out what is your, the first version that you'll uh, go to market with, right? Like the initial, um, design that you had in, in your customer perspective section uh, may not be the, the first version that you that you go to the customer with. Perhaps it takes too, too long to build and the goal is to ship something to the customer so early on uh, or as quickly as possible so that you can collect data and understand what are the actual customer needs and then you can iterate from there. So what's your minimum level of product for customers to fall in love with the product? Um, so that you can get to the market and then uh, learn from there with actual customer data. And to help facilitate that, 
an important next question you should ask yourself is, what is your, your measure of success? How will you know that your product is successful? What are the main metrics? Is it an acquisition oriented product? Is it retention oriented product? Is it, is it a product that will drive monetization? And then you should really, you know, you know that is going to be very different from, from business to business. Uh, from there, you should think about what's the estimated business impact. And that will, I think, be the, um, the most important question in terms of aligning your, your business stakeholders is, do you believe that given we're, uh, the resources you have and the resources that the business can muster, is this something that will be, will drive meaningful change to the business or will it just be a nice to have feature that won't really make a, a material impact for, uh, for your organization? And then finally, if you haven't actually met product market fit, it's important to think as a product manager uh, ahead of time, what, um, how do you know if it's, if it's better to pivot um, or if it's better to continue? And, and at what point do you know if it's better to pivot to a different strategy? Is it after a month? Is it after three months? Is it after you've gone through a certain amount of investments or a certain amount of, of customers? What are, uh, what are the trigger points that, uh, that get you to think about um, if the product is on the right path towards to getting to product market fit or uh, if it's better to, to change course now, right? Because you don't want to waste two years of effort building something that will never be successful. Um, so as part of that discussion in terms of, of pivot, you should think about what are the important risks for, um, uh, for your product. And so, uh, for example, in AI, a lot of times it's the creepiness factor, the, um, are you holding the right bar for delightful? Um, and from there, I think the the way that I found to be successful is working with your, your design partners to build something that, uh, that a customer will find intuitive and will find uh, helpful from, from day one. Uh, and then lot, the other point that I found is, is usually pretty important is how does the customer discover the product, right? So if you're building a, a new app for, for the customers, well, there's a lot of apps you're gonna be competing with in, in the app store. Um, how does the customer discover this product uh, in, the, in the app store? Or um, if you're building a, a new feature in a, in a very successful, uh, app or in a very on a very successful website, how do you know that your customer is actually going to be interested in, and get to that particular product? Uh, that will help inform uh, kind of a mini go-to-market strategy to make sure that um, your product is, is successful down the road. And the reason that's important beyond just the, the business metrics is it's really hard to, to collect a lot of data if your product isn't successful and um, doesn't drive a lot of customers. Uh, to, uh, doesn't uh, attract a lot of customers. Um, and then if you, if you are not, if you get into this vicious cycle, it's going to be very hard to collect the data that will help inform the, the better versions of, of your product. Th this last part, you know, doesn't happen all the time, but I think it, it's a, it's a clear risk that it sometimes happens, especially as organizations happen, as organizations grow, uh, different parts of an organization that are collaborating with you on this product might have different perspectives. And so you might have a hotly debated topic in terms of how should you approach a particular design question or a building question. And it's really important to, rather than let the, the debates fester for, for too long, just put them out in the open, go forth with um, your position in the, in the debate um, between should you go with option A or option B and foster a, a good debate among your leaders and and see if you can get to the, the right level of, of consensus among all your, your stakeholders. And so, you know, we're, we're now at a point where uh, the product that we, we know uh, what we want to build, we know the problem we want to solve for the customer, and we know that this problem product is, is meaningful for the business. We know our, our go-to-market strategy. Uh, we know how, what metrics we'll, we will use to measure success. And then we'll also, uh, we also know the, the risks and, and how, how we can mitigate those. So, so now we get to the part that's like, I, th I think the most exciting It's how do you, how do you build this product? Uh, and this, you know, varies from uh, engineering to, to data science. Um, but, but my approach then becomes uh, what I think is the, uh, what I find the most enjoyable um, in terms of, of product management. And so, um, you know, the first question you should ask yourself is what are the core components of, of your product? Uh, whether those are 
machine learning models, whether those are um, other infrastructure components used to power those machine learning models, or perhaps just the building blocks to stand up that customer experience you want to build beyond just artificial intelligence. Um, are those uh, components something that you can reuse from other parts of your business or will you have to build everything from scratch? And it's important to, to partner very closely with your engineers and um, your data scientists so that you're not blindsided, right? You don't want to promise that even if you have a great product that vision and a great uh, go-to-market strategy, if it takes you 10 years to build a product, I don't know if it's going to be a very successful product. And so uh, you want to partner with your engineers to understand how long will it take you to, to build this product and uh, what parts of, of, the, of existing infrastructure could you reuse uh, so that you can get to market in a, in a reasonable time frame and you know, reasonable di is different from, from business to business and from, from product to product. Um, from there, um, how do you, if you are successful, let's say you do get to product market fit really quickly, what's the path towards automation? So in artificial intelligence, um, you, know, you, you have a lot of models but models can get very stale very quickly. And so for example, for books, uh, perhaps a week ago, I, I was buying a lot of uh, mystery novels, but then all of a sudden this week, I'm really interested in travel books. And so uh, if my next recommendation is a mystery novel, perhaps I find that a bit uh, uninteresting and then the product isn't really as helpful. And so you need to find a way to, how do you scale uh, your models and your model production in such a way so that, they are uh, continuously relevant to, um, to the customer. Other questions you might want to ask yourself is what type of innovation will, uh, will the company need to uh, develop to, to build this product, right? So some of these uh, are components of, of your product might, uh, might, all, might not be new technical innovations, they might just be new to your company. But perhaps if you're building at, at the scale of, of a very large um, technology company, you might actually need to build a whole new way of processing data or a whole new way of reading data. Um, and so that's a big unknown. Is this something that's going to take you uh, three weeks to build? Is this something that's going to take you six months? That's, a, that's an unknown that you should call out and you should, um, that you should know ahead of time so that you're not surprised with your product just dragging out the, the launch date uh, because you're you're stuck in this endless cycle of, of unknowns that um, that you can't uh, that you can't grasp, and so uh, to to summarize, you know, I, I think if you if you approach product development from from this standpoint of thinking through um, the customer's perspective, what problem are you solving for the customer? Um, why is this meaningful for the customer? Uh, what's the customer experience end to end? It will force you to one work backwards from an actual need from the customer rather than from your own uh, perceptions about what a customer might want. Um, and then two, if you then think through how does this uh, product fit into the organizational uh, framework, and how does this, uh, how can you make sure that your product is a is a setup for success within your organization? It will help you get the right level of resources to to build a very cool and, and exciting product. And, and then lastly, from the technical component and um, from an AI uh, strategy, you should think about what are the, the components to build that product? Is this something that is, um, what are, uh, is this a product that will rely on, uh, on, new, uh, on new technology, on, on existing technology? And then if it's new technology, is this just new to, to your company or is it new to the whole world? Uh, because that will you will need to to account for that type of um, of innovation uh, as part of your uh, of your of the development plan of for the for the product, um, and so th that's really how I approach new product development. Um, you know, I'd love to to keep in touch. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to to reach out to me on on LinkedIn, and um, I'm. Uh, I'm happy to to stay in touch. Thanks, thanks everyone for for your time and for uh, being interested in AI uh, product management.